Hey, Brian. How you doing? Uh, it's going fantastical. Just amazing. What? Okay, sorry, I was hearing you through the Twitch stream. For some reason, I was watching my own Twitch stream, which was kind of weird. Is that like talking about yourself in the third person? All right, so... Yeah, you're, you're above me. So... I don't see the chat in my pop-out chat. Oh, there we go. That's a little delayed too. Cool. Brian, we couldn't hear you. Brian, talk. Let's find out. Let's ask people. Can you all hear Brian? Can you hear Brian? Brian, talk. How you doing? So they can hear me because they're hearing me talk about you, Brian. But uh, maybe we got a problem here. Let's go back and look at our streaming software and find out what's going on. Desktop, audio input capture. Talk, Brian. Yeah, it's not catching you. Let me change it over and try again. Keep talking. Dude, you're weird. So let me go back over to Zoom and play with some of the audio settings. And speaker should go through, ah, I think that's why. It's either gonna go through the multi output device or that other thing we set up. Right. All right, try talking now. Hi. Can anybody hear me on the stream? Still not catching you. Catch. Catch my voice. Uh, hold on. Keep talking. So we're talking oh, here. There we go. I think that's good. There we go. That's better. So folks, can you hear How's everybody Brian Clark doing? now? Yes, yes, Yay. yes. Yay. And that's it. That was the entire stream today. Done. <laughs> we figured out how to let Brian speak. <laughs> Thanks for letting my sound in, John. <laughs> Well, to, yeah, well, nobody cares why it happened, but it happened. I'll, tell, I'll talk to you later about it, Brian. <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for, uh, for joining us here. Uh, Brian Clark, who's right up there. He's my buddy who works with me at Microsoft. We're both cloud developer advocates. And he was showing me a demo this week that was pretty cool, which is good for Brian, because usually stuff he does isn't very cool, you know. <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. He showed me a demo this week where he's using effectively uh, the whole app that we're trying to build was basically you talk or you text into your uh, phone, sends a text off to a service. That service then gets listened to by some AI and then that AI translates that into what we want to do, which in this case is going to be using serverless functions in the background. And then that's going to then tell my home, which I've got some home automation lights above me to change color. So we can turn them yes. on or off, change them red or green, right? We are all going to take over John's home today. Yes. How does that sound, John? It sounds awful. <laughs> but we're going to try it and see. So he showed me this demo. It looked kind of involved, and we have not practiced this. I have no idea nope. how long it's going to take. Uh, but the cool part is we're going to build everything from scratch, except for a little bit of code that Brian's written up front. We're going to clone his repo. Uh, and we're going to try to put all the pieces in place. So things that we'll need are going to be uh, Visual Studio Code. We're going to need an Azure account to sign up to do some of this. Uh, we're going to need to log into Lewis. We'll explain what Lewis is and why he's such a wonderful person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lewis is a tool. And um, we might get into using Twilio for the texting. But we probably could skip that even if we just want to use the test tool. Right, Brian? Yeah, well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe we'll save the Trulio stuff for a little later because it's not necessary, but it's kind of cool. All right. So anybody who wants to follow Brian, by the way, what is your Twitter 
Twitter. Yeah, what's your Twitch ID? Clark EO. Clark IO. No underscore? No underscore on this one. I, I lucked out. All right. I put a link in the chat. Cool. Awesome. And thank you so many folks for coming in here. We've got uh, JT Sam, uh, Siva. Is that the Siva that I know? If it, it is, is, say yes. Uh, New Wu. We've got Andrew Usher. Jamie Barrow. Skillet Special. I love that ID. Alex. And let's see. Anybody else in here? Mike. Andrew. Portland. Lots of cool people. Hey, Siva. Nice to see you. Hopefully you're uh, not doing this during work hours over there at that company that I know you work at. <laughs> anyway, you know, the other you thing is coming. Twitch doesn't give us the like a very accurate uh, list of who's in here because I always like calling out and saying hi to everybody that's in here. But uh, it's tough to do that at times, you know? Yeah, it is. You don't have all the information. We got folks from South Africa. We got people from Kansas City. Uh, Brian and I are wow. here in Florida. If you want his home personal address, by the way, let me know and I'll hand it out to you in the chat. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> All right, so Brian, with that, where do you want to get started? Maybe list out the things we're going to build and then go do them, or we just want to go do it? Let's Yeah, let's talk at a high level the project, what it's going to do. So All right. we want to be able to handle taking in any text input, whether it be from an SMS service like Twilio or just some client that you want to send messages from. Uh, we let that be open-ended pretty much, but it's something to send a string text okay. that is the command that you want to perform. Gotcha. Cool. That's, that's step link. one. Well, that's the first piece, right? That's going to send the message over to Azure Functions bot, and that will know to handle that message and send it off to the Lewis AI, which is the language understanding service uh, through Azure as well. Still with me? Yeah, I'm writing it down here. Okay, cool. From there, Lewis AI will, we're going to have to go in there and train it to understand the different types of text and commands that we want it to know and, and interpret. Yep. Um, and then it will, when it receives that, that way when it receives the messages, it can help share with the Azure function bot um, what the result was, what's the intention that the user sent over. And then we can go ahead and um, act upon that, perform that action. So that's where the last piece comes in. We're going to perform an action against LIFX light bulbs. Um, those are, you know, internet connected light bulbs on your home network. Uh, I have a couple in my house. John, I know you have a couple in your house, and that's what we're going to use today. They have a great HTTP REST API, which is part of the reason why I, I started this project with using their devices. And uh, there's also some NPM modules that we're going to, or one NPM module we'll be leveraging that helps make it a little bit easier to uh, uh, interact, interface with that. That's the word I was looking for. Interact? No. Interface? Yes. We want to interface with the LIFX Cloud uh, HTTP, HTTP REST API. And that would be the last step. And then we should be able to see the lights over John's camera there go on and off, or we'll, maybe we'll see if we'll change colors too. That's how I have the code written right now. Um, and we'll go from there. Cool. What is up, JT Sum from Massachusetts, and then Alex from Ukraine? Wow. So this and is our Cuba. list of what we're going to be doing, oh. right? Greece, UK, holy, Greece. holy moly. Whereabouts in Greece? Are you from D. Cephalus? I wish it was like real names, as opposed to these hash names. Yeah. Hey, Daniel from Cuba. Thanks. All right, uh, boo, boo, boo. want to go move that otherwise. So what I did is I put our list of requirements up on screen so people can feel it, can see it, can hear it. And I'm actually going to put those in the chat window just so people can see them. Let's see if that awesome. pastes good. Wow, that really did not paste well. But anyway, it is there. Mexico, all right, copycats. And so uh, I've got some code up here, which is not the project we're going to be using. So we'll get rid of this in a minute but we probably need to grab Chrome and go find your starter app, or do you want to start with Lewis? Where do you want to start? Uh, we can go get the code first, if that's where you want to head. All right, so I've already got a tab open with that. Let's go fly a kite. I'm going to send a link in the chat as well so that people yeah. can follow along if they like. Do that? So I'm going to zoom that in a little bit. 
Uh, Brian's already committed the cardinal sin of GitHub repos without having a good readme, but uh, we'll make fun of him later. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Wait, there's a readme, but the readme is empty. That's Dude, why. that's like not even having a readme. That's worse than not having a readme. <laughs> <laughs> all right hey check out this project you have no idea what it does it just says house bot okay everybody who's watching right now do you agree that this is like worse than not having a readme just having a readme that says the title that's like i've made the effort of putting this in but i don't even feel like filling it in yeah uh, welcome from columbia gabriel all right so i've got this repo this repo is what since it doesn't tell me anything it's containing what it is the azure function code written in javascript uh, and you know, leveraging Node, the Node capabilities in Azure Function. It's kind of the hub of this. Would you mind if we actually step back one more time? And I want to, sure. I want to just draw a picture of what we're doing on the okay. fly. I'm going to open up PowerPoint let's to do that because that's what I do. Okay. All right. Let's see here. I got to go get PowerPoint and bring it over. Boom. We'll make a new presentation. Sounds good. Uh, once it's happy, we will. There we go. We'll delete what's on the screen and we'll take some shapes. We're just going to use squares because that's what I care about. So <laughs> you're saying here, oops, it went away. You're saying the oh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have some kind of a, uh, a text message, right? That's going to be our, our intentions. Yes. All right. So we're going to take that text message and we're going to send that to what? We're going to send that to the uh, Azure Functions bot. Okay. So there's going to be an Azure Functions bot like that. So he's yes, going sir. to listen or she's going to listen. So this thing is going to listen to that thing, right? Yeah. And then we'll, it's going to go the other way too, right? Never use okay. blue on blue. So the message is going to come in. As soon as the message gets there, the bot's going to listen for it. Tell me if I get off yep. base here. No, you're good. Okay. And then the functions bot is then going to send it to Lewis. Yep, that is correct. What does Lewis stand for again? Uh, language understanding, and I don't know the IS, but it's like language understanding and interpreter, is interpretation super. service. Yeah. <laughs> is super. I like that better. <laughs> Interpretation service? Interpretation service? I have no idea if I spelled that right now. It is, it's super. It's awesome. <laughs> I just go language understanding. That's, that's the way I remember. All right, perfect. It. Let's get rid of the other two. All right, so the bot is going to do what with Lewis? It's going to send data to Lewis again, right? Yeah, so the, the bot is using actually um, uh, NPM packages, again, that mm -hmm. will interact with Lewis for us, basically. It sets things up. Um, and then, so that way it, it will handle the actual messaging and, and passing off that message we received to Lewis. Lewis is going to, based on its training that it, we, we do to it, which we'll step through as well, uh, will know how to interpret that message that it received and what the intention was of the user, like the type of action needs to be performed. In this case, turn a light on or turn a light off or change the color or use a different light maybe, right? Yep. Um, and then once that's figured out by Lewis, it sends the result of that back to the Azure Functions bot. And then that's where we handle, all right, now we know what they wanted to do. What's the code that we need to execute that goes and does that? All right. In this case, it's going to be, we want to go talk to the LIFX API. So that's that step can one. connect that's to your app. Yep. Right. And then step two is where the Functions bot is going to talk to Lewis. Uh, step yes. 12, right? It's going to come back from Lewis. I like getting a visual in my head of what the heck I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That always helps. This will be step four. And then step five is down here. I might be oversimplifying it a little bit too. We're going to find out. I have not done this before. So this is Brian teaching me how to do this whole process. So text messages, sends it over to the bot. Uh, the bot listens for it, really, right? Mm -hmm. And then Lewis gets it. Lewis tells us, okay, this is a command, or maybe it isn't a command. It can't recognize it one way or the other. Uh, it gives us information about the command. Then we send it to the LifeX, that's what I call it, LIFX API, which is the brand of bulbs that I'm using. 
and we send it over to yep. my lights. Uh, Jimmy Barrow, it's a bot for a house. Seems self-explanatory. Yes, exactly. So maybe. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> He's on my side. I don't need more in my README. <laughs> so, all right. So there we go. We're going to get rid of this little picture screen. Brian's spitting more What's, knowledge. Hold on a minute. What's up, Rival? It's good to see you here. Also, I think, John, we're kind of glossing over Azure Functions a little bit, maybe. I, I, I imagine not everyone's familiar with serverless and, and the Azure Functions is serverless. So maybe we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, why don't we talk about those as we build them? Okay. So what's the first thing you want to do? The first thing I want to do is spin up the resources in the Azure portal so that okay. we can get all the different app IDs and keys that so we're going to go to the portal. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm not going to clone the repo yet. Yeah, let's hold off on that. All right. So I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. And it's like, look at all those redirects. <laughs> There's like 50 of them. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to create a resource. What am I creating? I'll just keep a set. I'm watching the stream to know what's going on your screen right now. So there's a little delay. Okay. So I would go to, you're going to go create a resource and then search bot. Okay. Create Make it super simple. And I'm going to search for bot. A functions bot. I How see right now you're creating a Twitch dashboard. Great resource. Yep. And I'm going to uh, select okay. a function bot. Yep. That's exactly what we want. And there's no option. Give it. Create it. There should be option. Now there's you options. Click on okay. Yeah. You fill out all the information. I got to get the bot a name. When, oh, yeah. When you click on create. All right. This is going to be my Twitch Lifex. Bot. Bot. Okay. Subscription. That's mine. New resource group sounds great. Location, how about I pick one that's closer to me? Yes. Uh, pricing per tier, a dollar. Sounds good. For a thousand. <laughs> First thousand are free, right? Messages? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I got to double check on that. Let's. I can look it up. How about we choose Node? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Do I want uh, language and then understanding? You can go that route. Either way, we're gonna be running our own thing. Okay. So you can you can choose this. I would yeah do language understanding. That's fine. Okay. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you some template kind of code, but we're gonna just override it. Okay. Anyway. And there is no Lewis that's in the east. It looks like it's in the west, U.S. I'm okay with that. Yep. Consumption. That's good because I want to pay for what I use. Azure storage. Sure. That's where it's gonna put some of this stuff. App insights. Do I confirm and read the notice below? Yes. Everybody here, all my friends <laughs> read it too. I'll pin it to my dashboard. Don't make fun of me, Brian. <laughs> I'm going to read it's, the legal. It's always like that. No one reads the terms and service except like lawyers, right? Yes. So I have a link to share too with everybody if I could find the link. Where is it? There it is. So there's this Lewis link. It's aka.msjp Lewis. And if I come back over here, I can paste that inside of there. Hey, Impale, nice to see you again. So this is kind of what we're going to be doing today. We're going through creating this bot with Lewis. If you click that link that I put in the chat window, you can kind of follow along with some of what we did. My bot's getting submitted right now and getting created. Uh, Lewis itself, it's got a really cool UI, uh, sorry, URL. Just go to lewis.ai actually, which is cool. And this is where I saw the pricing somewhere and I was reading up on it this morning. Hey, Tex Vectrix, thank you. I uh, love that you love what we're doing with this stuff. Uh, some of it's planned and most of it's not, which is great. So this is kind of where the Lewis stuff comes from. You can publish it, you can create a Lewis app. Uh, there's pricing information on it too. Pretty neat stuff. All right. Yeah. Didn't create it yet. So since it didn't create it, I'm going to go clone this repo just to save time. Okay, that sounds good. Or should I fork it? What do you want me to do? I'm it. Clone it. Clone just it. Clone it. You're gonna, we're, at the very least, what I want to do, what we'll do is run it locally. Mm -hmm. And cloning it will let you get there quicker. Okay, so I'm going to go down into VS Code, and I don't know what project I've opened, but it's not what I care about. I'm going to go into my CD git folder, 
and I'm going to run. Yeah, yeah, text vectrix. It is it is kind of fun watching people figure things out on the fly. I think I enjoyed it. Me too. All right, so I just cloned it, and then I'm going to go into the folder. It's called Housebot. It's right there, and then I'm going to do code. So normally be code dot and then dash r means reopen it in the same window that I'm in. So it's going to reuse the code window I'm in. Cool. And what I could do is go to uh, terminal here. If you do an ls, actually let's go into Finder. What's the command to open Finder with VS Code? Uh, that I don't know actually. Wow, Let's you stumped click. me. Normally, I know all these things. So if I kill the Git folder, right, that's gonna unassociate it with what you've got. Yeah. So I can push it up on my own later. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do that, and then coming over here, if I go to Git, I could then yeah, do, do Git in it. Install providers. I don't want to install. I just want to. What's going on here? I want to do a Git init. There you go. Initialize. Cool. And there's our initial files. We're just going to do init. I'll put in the readme later that it came from Mr. Brian. Uh, what icon pack hey, am yeah. I using? Good question. I think it's Angular Material. Not Angular Material, but the Material mm -hmm. icons. But yeah. Yeah, Material icon theme. I think those. that's the best one that's out there right now. Yeah, it's not. I don't love it, but I like it a lot. All right, yeah. so now we've done a get init. I've got my thing. I'm going to go into the readme right now, and I'm going to say uh, credit to uh, Brian Clark for helping craft this. And I will make this prettier later. But I always like to give credit where credit's due. Cool, so now Thanks, i got the code. Man. The bot's okay. there, dude. So what do I do with the bot? Bot's there? Mm -hmm. We don't see the bot yet. It'll come shortly. We'll see it. Material and Find Awesome are currently the best. Yeah. Not man. Not man 05. What's up? Thank you for joining the stream. Impale, Impale says there is a new Angular, Angular blog post. Oh, trying to change subjects on us. Neither all for everything, but together I get my needs. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Hey, not man. All right. So the bot is up. Yep. The bot's here. What do I do with it? Uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Hey, don't worry, Impales. No big deal. I, I didn't mean that in the... Yeah, it's fine. You gotta learn uh, to so the talk bot... and code at the same time. Gotta keep up with me, man. I can't. I'm not <laughs> like you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I am very single-threaded. That's it. <laughs> All right. I let's... mean, I could talk in code, but I can't talk code and read the chat and respond to people at the same time. I got to switch, switch streams, pun intended. This is fun. It kind um, of feels like when I'm talking with Ward, but you're me and I'm Ward. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All right. So what we, let's test it out actually. So okay. if you have the bot going and you want to see it actually working now, something tangible. So on the left hand side where you see the bot management header, yep. uh, I'm pointing to my screen like you can see, but uh, under there, there's build and test in web chat. Click on the test in web chat. It's authorizing the chat with the bot. Please start. Oh, this. type your nice. message. Okay. Then type just like hello. Hello, Twitchers. I got to move so I can see my screen. <laughs> you reached greeting intent. You said hello, Twitchers. So there's obviously some function back there that's called the greeting thingy. Yes. Now, do you want to see it? Let's go take a look at what it comes with in that template. Okay. Uh, if you click. click on the build option that's above that test and web chat. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, that the test and web chat gives you the ability to like on the fly test in web chat what the bot's going to do and how it responds based on changes you make to it. Okay. So this bot. Uh, so here. I'm going to click open in functions. Yes. Right. You have three options. You can download source code, open in functions, and edit from there, or you can set up continuous deployment through some source control, which is what I'm attempting to do with mine through GitHub, but All we'll right. get to that another. So folks know um, there's some grayed out stuff here. This is actually using a Chrome extension that Brian wrote and some other folks that blurs out my keys so you can't copy me. <laughs> All right. Except it's not perfect though. So we're probably gonna see some keys today. 
So just keep that in mind. All right. So I've got my function. There's one here called. Uh, so yes. So this is the Azure Functions app overview, and let's let's talk a little bit now that we're in it. What an Azure function is. It's it's essentially serverless, and serverless. The way I think about it really is instead of me having to spin up and write a node server, uh, what port to run it on, all that, you know, stuff that cruft that you kind of have to go through to spin up a server, Azure Functions through its serverless option um, lets you run code. Like you, you throw your code into there, literally just throw it, you know, with, with your hand, and then it runs. Uh, no, but it's like you put your functions in there for what you would have for maybe your API endpoints or just things you want to do like interacting with a bot. Yep. And you don't have to worry about spinning up a server yourself kind of thing. And that's what's my you know, way of describing it, unless you have a different way, Joe. Nope. Uh, but we have a nice 217,000 line function. That's awesome. So what are we going to do? So that is uh, something that we need to we're going to provide some feedback to the product team probably about. Um, that is the funk packed version of your function code. So I noticed you clicked on view files already. So if you click on index.js, that'll show you the actual original code before it got funk packed. Yeah. That's how they call it. Yep. Yeah, but what are we going to do here? What do we want it to do? We're just looking at what the code's doing. That's all. Okay. So this is the, the, the template you get out of the box when you when you chose node and you said, I want to do language understanding. So it says, pull in the bot builder. It's kind of small, by the way, if you can blow it up a little bit. Yeah. Just uh, pull in the bot builder NPM package and the bot builder dash Azure NPM package. That way we can start connecting to what type of bot we want to do, which in this case we say it's the, um, it's going to be a Lewis bot. So we give it a Microsoft app ID, uh, yeah, let's password. Not, let's not explain the code we're going to blow away because we're not going to use this code, right? Kinda, uh, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so but it gives this, you an idea of how but it's doing. The point doing. of this is, I don't want to go through the code and say oh, the point of this function is to do what? Talk to Lewis. Yes, and then receive the responses from Lewis, the okay. output from Lewis. So the bot let's, and let's talk about talk that because function. we are going to still use similar code here. So if you go down to line forty-two, <coughs> yep. Uh, in there, we can see it's kept, it's doing almost like a switch case statement, right? So if Lewis comes back and says that the message was for the intent of greeting, then it hits that matches case, right? Yep. And then you can run your code in there. And that's how it goes on and on. You can have as many as you want. Pretty much. Okay, so we've got a function. I've got your code locally, which is going to replace the function code, right? Yes. So how do we get it up there? We're not going to get it up there just yet because we let's get everything running locally first okay. to make sure it works because that's that's where I'm at and then getting it working in there is okay. A long so game. I guess let me say this in a more clear way. Instead of listening to you read this code to me, what do you want to do next? <laughs> <laughs> I want to code, man. All right, let's code. Let's go. Get, go go to VS Code. Well, okay. we need to get the keys. This okay. is where you need to hide your screen or something, or if you don't care and you just want to recycle the keys later, that's fine. Which too. key am I going to get? Uh, so let's go back over in the portal, go to like a, a blade over mm -hmm. to the Twitch LIFX bot build view that we have, or hit the X button that's there. Go down to this one and click on the overview. Yes. I'm waiting for it to catch up so I can see exactly where you are. I never remember which one is it under. Is it under app settings or function settings or where is it? We want to go to application settings, which is under the app. Should I click on that yet setting. or should I get it off screen to do it? Uh, I would get it off screen if you All want right. to hide it. Yeah, I'm going to hide my key real quick. So bear with me as I try to do this on a really tiny screen. I'm on app settings. I'll kind of walk through what I'm doing. And in here, there's a bunch one of app flow. settings. Which one am I looking for? There's a bunch of things in here. So you're going to want a few of them. There are, we want the Microsoft app ID and password. You want the Lewis API key? Is that what you said? Or Microsoft? My, Microsoft app ID should be one of the keys in app setting. Okay. And then there's a password that you want to grab. All right. I'm going to have to go into my Sublime real quick. So that's the MSID. 
Okay. And then if that Lewis app was created, uh, we can go check that out at lewis.ai. Because we're going to need the Lewis app ID and key as well. Yeah, there's a Lewis app ID thing in here too. Oh, you have that already? Well, it's in here at least. There's a Lewis okay. API key and a Lewis app ID. Yep, you want both of those as well then. This is really hard on a tiny screen. Bear with me. That's fine. I'm, yeah. I got to figure out how to scroll left and right. So Lewis API key. Right? Yes. And app ID. All right. And I got to go back. Let's go to the app ID. And there's also a host name. Do I need that? Yeah, I would copy that as well. This way it's easier than typing it out. All right. So scrolling, grabbing the fifth thing I got to grab. Voice is fun. I'm learning how to copy and paste. <laughs> That's what coding's all about. Copy pasta. All right. So copy pasta. I can close that panel, turn back on your thing, your mask toggler. And let's get off this page and I'll go back. All right. All right. So, let's go to your Lewis app. Or no, you already have that. Uh, so like what you want to do in VS Code. Cut the blue wire, John. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> no, 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 that's funny. Um, <laughs> uh, that threw me off. <laughs> it's in the URL anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to change keys later, so I guess I could have just shown them, but go for it. So in VS Code, we want to create a .env file. All right. Ready? It's amazing. Save. And in, in there, you want to have a bunch of, you're going to have like text, and then you're going to say equals, and then the value of all those keys that you copied over. So we're going to do Microsoft App ID, uh, Camel Case. Like that? Uh, sure, once I see it. <laughs> yeah, text equals the value of the keys I copied over. All right, yep. so I did App ID, and that's the Microsoft App ID. Yep, Microsoft App ID, Microsoft App Password. You want me to type them all out? Yeah, type them all out for now so that we can just see what, what they're going <clears> to... <throat> you want underscores? What do you want? It's just camel case. Oh. So capital M, capital A for app, capital P for password. Okay. Microsoft Password? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going to... are you just showing here. it on the stream then? Yeah, okay. I see. So that. you want me to do this showing everybody? Yeah, why not? All right, then why did I hide it before? I don't know. All right, so I'm going to show everybody my keys. Go for it. Lewis API key. Uh, really quick, it's my Microsoft app password. So these have to match something? Yeah, these are matching. Remember the keys that you saw in app settings? We're matching them here. All right. So that we can run it all locally. Yeah, so let me know what those keys were again because I don't remember. You know what would help? If I actually had a sample.env file in my repo too, huh? Yes. <laughs> and I don't think we need this one, but I'm going to put it in here. Uh, I think this is the Lewis app ID. That's the Lewis API key. Yeah, so let me know That's if I That's a really good right. password, by the way. Lewis host name. Lewis right. API host name. Lewis. In all caps for API. API host name. On five. Okay. On five. Is everything else okay? Uh, okay? Yes. That looks good. So the other things that are specific to uh, my the code is we're going to have a node env, node environment. So that's all caps, node. I was promised live sharing. <laughs> Maybe. All right. You got that in there? So yes. it's all caps node underscore all caps env and then equals production all lowercase. Okay. And then um, the other thing that they expect when we create the the what we call the build bot kind of thing that are using this builder function or object rather. Um, it's called bot open ID metadata, but I just leave that blank. Um, and I have that in my env. So that's camel case bot open ID 
metadata. Bot, say it again. Bot open ID metadata. Like uppercase, lowercase? Camel case. Like that. Okay. What do you want that to be? Uh, just leave it there. That's fine. It's fantastic. Right? All right. So now we have the environment all set up. Do you have the Azure Function CLI installed by any chance? Is he Funk? Is that what it is? Yeah. Let's find so out. Depending on what version you have, it's either Funk Start or Funk Post Start. Uh, invalid choice for Funk. AZ Funk Dash V? No, no, it's just Funk. Just Funk? No AZ. Funk no AZ. I wish we had one CLI. Is it Funk Dash Dash version? I know there's like Funk Help. You sure it's just Funk? Azure Functions CLI. Let's Google it. It's on NPM. This one? Yeah, if I run FUN. Is this what we're looking for? The Azure Functions CLI? I would go to the documentation because they have like an older version. I know. And an well, I Googled it. Develop and run functions locally. Great. How about create a function, Azure CLI, overview? There's got to be like install, find install, oh, that's you. <laughs> Azure CLI. I've got the Azure CLI, but how do you get the functions piece? You're not talking. Let me get the... Me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Who else am I talking to? We want the <laughs> we want the CLI, the Azure Function CLI. Okay. We don't need the Azure CLI for this. Okay. How do I install that? That's what I'm asking. Well, let me find that for you. I need to find the link now. All right. Let's see. There's an npm package. Let's see here. Yeah, there's the page I was on. Install the functions core tools. Right. I did that. That's this. So it's a different NPM package? Yeah. All right, let's go back over here. I'll make sure I still got it. Wait, so this is installing. Go. I'm going to open up a second window in the terminal here with command D. PM list dash G dash depth equals zero. So it's installed. Unsupported platform for Azure Functions Core Tools. That's awesome. Here we go. I got a link. Only for works you. on Windows. I'm going to put it in the chat. Great. Go for it. Boom. Yeah, Functions the, run local. Right. That's the page I was on. Oh. But what am I clicking on? Because I clicked on the core tools, um, and that only works on Windows, it says. Version 2 runtime. Okay. I got to scroll down. Yeah. That's the one you want. That's what I was saying. Right? Yeah. Version one so you're going to run. Hey, make a PR at the end of this. Move version one below version two. Yeah. That's silly. All right, so use the following commands. Copy. I'm making a note. Yeah, please make a note. It's not like we work for the company, right? We should fix it. All right, so we're installing the core tools. Downloading the CLI. This is a new Mac, so I don't know what I've got installed on it. It's only about a week okay. and a half old sudo bash run the core tools now i can do funk init okay yeah okay so now i should be able to type funk dash dash version this is dotnet cli to be in the path make sure to install the dotnet core sdk i did not do that yep. yet should i do that yes you should it's up uh in like there's like a little important note that says install dotnet core 2.0 yeah, I'm link. downloading it now. It's 150 meg. We'll run that. It's on another window. I'm not going to bore you with me installing it, so I'll do that real quick. Type in my password, 12345. Hit enter. 
right in the files, and you can watch the rest of it. It's like watching paint dry. Yeah. So I'll need core. Yep, Undertow 3, you'll need core. Thank you. Did that there? I should have watched you over in the <laughs> chat. All right, so we go back to the page that we were on. Core tools, core tools. Where's requirements? Is that this purple thing? Yeah. That probably yeah. brings us to the same page. Yep, same so URL. Once that's done, then you should be good to go. It says less than a minute. What do you think? You believe it? I don't know. In that minute, let's let's do ask John a question. What's your favorite movie? Uh, series. I don't know. It's between the Star Wars saga or Lord of the Rings. Oh, interesting. All right. Move to trash. We're going to get rid of that window and that window and that window and that window. Clean it all up. All right. So now I should be able to type funk dash dash version, right? I think so. Still thinks. Is it not happy? How do I do it? Like funk init? Is there like a basic command I can do with funk? Uh, usually funk help will get you a list of everything I can do. Dash dash help. Yeah, it's not happy. No, no, just help. No dashes. It still is not happy. Requires an uh, to be in the path. Hmm. Didn't I already install that? Oh, open up a new instance of the terminal. Yeah. It might not it. have picked up your new change. Okay. Restart VS Code. <laughs> you had the same thought I did, Gabra. Awesome. Yes. Restart the terminal. Yeah. Cool. Funk help. Hey, look, now I've got some funk going on. Ah, Sweet. We're getting funky. You know what's funny is you install a new laptop like once every couple of years, and when you do it, you forget all the <laughs> things you have to install. So, yes, now I have functions back, which I miss my old laptop for that reason. Yay. Cool. So now you should be able to just say funk start. Woohoo! All right, funk start. Woohoo, oh. Gabra. <laughs> Funk start. So I'm starting functions locally. This function. Yes. You're in that folder, right? Worker process, script host error occurred, blah, blah, blah. This is still okay though, right? Those are errors that aren't really errors. Mm, let's see. Bah, bah, bah. No, that is a problem. Let's 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 step through this. Let's let me say that again. Okay. Let's 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 let's. You didn't run npm install. We gotta do that first. That's why. Yes, that's a good point. So let's actually go look and see scriptos worker process exit code. <coughs> Cannot find module bot builder. Yep, it was buried in there. Yep. Just making sure. So I'll kill that. npm install. Love the transparency. Students, junior devs, seeing there's no genuine secret to development they don't know. It's just pure reading, debugging, and googling. Yes, trap three n. It's true. Has too many to save changes. That's fine. So what's going on with this? Oh, because we didn't ignore everything? This is weird. Sometimes I notice this in Git ignores. Like 5,000 files. That's amazing. Because no yeah. modules was in here, right? No, it's not. Yeah, I think... Um, Why is it yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. So if I do that, that should go down from 5,000 to something significantly less, shouldn't it? Yes. Hello. Yes. It's not going down. Can you not hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. It's not going down. <laughs> uh, do slash node modules? Yeah, I've done that before, and sometimes I just do node modules. And What do I have? Let me see here. Let's see. Ignore. Let me refresh the window. Oh, you know what? It might be because um, VS Code has global setting, like uh, ignore. Hey, we're back to three. Yeah. So I did a refresh. Everybody's curious. I have a key binding to reload window, oh. which is command R. Reload window reloads VS code without shutting it down. <laughs> Not man. John talking to his code. Oh, you don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> right. No, he's help. I think he was helping me out. I didn't recognize that you were talking to your code. Ah, okay. <laughs> As we all do. Yes. Brian's yeah. caught me singing to my code. So. Oh, yeah. Dance. He does this like shoulder shrug dance thing. All I do. I do. All the time. I do. All right. Funk start. Who wants to yeah. start now? I have to remove cache files from Andrew. Never mind. Uh, maybe. In this case, I don't think that was the problem, but yeah, that's usually a problem. 
Not men wants to see you sing now. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to just happen naturally. All right, so your code still isn't running, Brian. Uh-oh, what happened now? I don't know. Let's scroll back to the top. Read through the error messages. Debug file, consecutive, blah, blah, blahs. Here's my Cannot HTTP. Cannot read property length of undefined thing. That's a fantastic error, by the way. Yeah. Malformed messages. I'm to think what we might be missing. Property of undefined. Are we sure we got everything else ready? Like, what's in your package? Bot build or oh, dot end, lifex. What's looking for length in there? Are the dot ends okay? Like, did I name these the same way you did? Are you sure? Let me double check. Bring bring those up on the screen. I'll look at side by side here. I seem to recall it was Microsoft App PWD or something. Yeah, Is that good. what it was in, in your app setting? I think so, but I I can go look. All right, hold, hold on. Keep them there for a minute. So Matt, Microsoft App ID Camel Case, Microsoft App Password Camel Case. Um, oh, get, get rid of the equals after the bot open ID metadata. Okay. Uh, node in the Darren's asking, thing. do I have an open array square bracket? Uh, this is all his code, so I'm assuming his code worked on his machine, so I don't think so. I'm running it, it works on my machine, yeah. Ding, uh, yes, yeah, so I have it running on my machine right now with that same code. Um, right, so I got rid of the I think it might have been that bot open ID metadata. <coughs> You're sure all the names are spelled correctly, though. Lewis API yeah, host name, yes. Dude. Lewis API key, yes. Lewis app ID, yes. Well, this is, this is a good thing to experience because now we got to figure out how we can debug this, right? Yeah, if you can't get it to run, though, how do you debug it? So one of the questions would be, did like it actually NPM install everything? So I'm using NPM 5.6. Okay. Node 8.94. Okay. Uh, I got my node modules up here. I can delete them and retry it just to make sure. Do that one more time. NPM install. Should be getting cached. Anybody have any ideas in the chat? Of why yeah. it's busted? Help us out, chat. I really wish you checked um, in your uh, sample ENV. I can do that right now. Xcode select error, Xcode build. Delete the lock file as well. Yeah, I could do that before it, but it shouldn't matter if it got the same versions. But we can try that too. Do not update NPM. <laughs> Did something happen to you, Bab, when you updated NPM, Rick? Same error again. All right, I'm uh, it's creating an ENV sample that I'm going to upload. Start before. process node inspect 5858. Why is it trying to debug node? Type error. Cannot read property length of undefined. I didn't change any of your code by accident, did I? No, that's just a new file. That's just a git ignore. That's just a readme. In fact, we'll just move those up. You got a great commit message. What? I'm wasting time while you look. So here's the code. Lewis API key, Lewis app ID, Lewis API host name. All right, I put I pushed a sample uh, ENV so you can compare it to what I had without you know without the value. Oh, Ramana is saying there's a bug in a pre-release version of NPM, the new version. People are losing their mind over it. People lose their mind over a lot of things, don't they? Oh, wow. All right, so let's go back to Clarkio's page. 5.7, messing up file permissions. Yeah, I've heard some folks talking about that, too. End sample. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to go back to my page. And, yeah, what the heck? I don't care. App ID, password, bot open ID, metadata. Bot open ID metadata, node in production, API host name, Lewis API key, Lewis API. I didn't have uh, LifeX in here. Should I have? Inter the node modules? 
No, the keys that I'm looking at. Your sample, ENV. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah, we can go do that next, I guess. <laughs> All right, I just I would. Well, come line. actually do this, do this. I wanna I wanna get it just running locally without having to worry about connecting to LIFX just okay. yet. So comment that out, seven through nine. Okay, and the and function should come be out good. seven through nine, which is where it talks to LIFX. But isn't it going to do something with? Oh, that's only going to happen if I actually call it. Okay. Right. So we'll do other other messages right. to it instead of um, the lights one. All right. Trying to run it again. Is coding expecting something as an array? That's what it sounds like, right? The length the function cannot be read or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so I imagine it, it was that. We were missing that key, I think. So it was connecting to LifeX, yep. and I didn't have a LifeX key. Yep. Saju10, thanks for joining us. All right, so I've got the function. Should I try hitting this? No. No. What we want to do now is get the bot emulator to message it. Okay. So. I think I shared that link with you once already. Do you have it handy still, or do you need me to get it? I don't it know again? what you're talking about, so no. Right, What's the bot emulator? <clears throat> it's basically a client interface that can talk to this now for us locally. Okay, where do I get that? I am getting link for you. And I'm going to put it in the Twitch chat so other people can see it too. Bam. All right. Clarkio, Microsoft Docs, Bot Framework, Bot Service Debug Emulator. Awesome. Yes. So Read do it. not, uh, let me go to that link as well, I guess, right? If you're using Windows and using this behind a firewall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you don't, don't worry about the NGROC part. You can just download and run it. I'm looking yeah. for where download is. I'm going to look for the word. Download the Bot Framework. Download yeah, and the GitHub release is paid. Okay. All right. Which one would you like me to grab? You should grab the, where is it? But yeah, what are these? Now I'm wondering, which one did I grab? Oh, there's Mac Zip. Uh, it's like the so this fifth one, one down. 3.535 Mac Zip? Yep. Okay. There we go, 53 seconds, under two. Yep, we were missing that environment setting. So we learned here that my making fun of Brian not having a ENV sample was absolutely warranted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bot emulator framework. I'm opening it up. I still think I am. Open it up, get it running. Are you sure you want to run it? Well, yeah, because Brian told me to, and Brian wouldn't tell me to do it otherwise. This is really malware. Thanks. All right, so here's my... I'm trying to drag it over. Here's my bot framework. All right. It's amazing. Put your endpoint URL right. in there. Now, that URL you saw in Terminal, we want to grab that. What's Terminal? You want to grab your... Or in the VS Code Terminal? What's the Terminal? Uh, it's where trains come into the station. Oh, good. Uh, where airplanes come to park. <laughs> All right, now I gotta grab my app ID, my password, and my locale. Uh, don't worry about locale, but yes, everything else you need. App ID. Boom. Password. Bam. Connect. All right. Rick Dees has a question for you, John. Do you do tutorials for Linda or Pluralsight? Your name sounds really familiar in the context of teaching to me. Yes, I do tutorials with Pluralsight, though I haven't done one in a while. Good question, Rick. Okay, once you click... Oh, sorry. Go for it. Once you click connect, you should see some uh, log messages in VS Code now. Yeah, I can to see show it that in the like... bottom right-hand corner over there. Okay, so now type in like, hello, as your message and hit enter this is like a log inside the emulator thing and if i go back to code you're saying i should see him down here too yeah okay i'm going to clear out my terminal there just so we can see new stuff and Sounds let's good. let's do this now we can see both at the same time so i can type hello twitchers all right cool so we're testing our bot sup yo local yep 
So it's working. I can tell that something you now, typed because you say that. Yeah. Well, I, actually, that was Burke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, should, we should mention Burke Holland, another good buddy of ours, has uh, helped write some of this code too. Yep. Rick, I knew it. Yeah, must have watched one of your tunes before. Yes, that is my nasally voice that you've heard before. All right, Brian, we've tested out our function and the bot can talk to it. We commented out the code where it talks to LifeX. Okay, let's, just to make sure everybody's kind of grokking what's going on here, go back over to the code and we can change what it responds to when you say hello, Twitchers. Okay. And let's say it, let's have it say hello, impale987 since he was the last chatter. Let's do that. Let's make, let's do that. Uh, just so folks know, this format of functions is the functions called messages. How did I know that? If you go back over here, the APIs, API slash messages. So that's the name of the function. We come back to code. It's in a messages folder. We have a function JSON, which kind of defines what the function looks like. It's an HTTP trigger. It's got input for request and output for response. And the actual function is in a file called index.js. Cool. Okay. So the code is open, Brian. And you want me to change this to do what exactly? Under the part where it says matches greetings, yep. Um, instead of it saying sup yo, let's just say I am, you know, hello impale nine eight seven. How you doing or something? Hello impale nine six seven. How is your day? All right. See, you come join the chat, and you're going to get called out. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you become part of the show. That, go ahead. I was just saying, you become part of the show. It's fun. Oh, yeah. So when we did this, though, it's automatically still running, right? It recompiled and did it because we're running functions locally. We're not running a function in the cloud. We're running it locally in my machine. You can't see my hand. Why am I doing this? <laughs> but yes, you're exactly right. <laughs> so now if we just go back again, we type in something else like, hello, Twitchers. And I spelled it wrong, but that should be okay. We should get... There you go. You're in the live stream. Impale. All right. Woohoo! Impale, you're part of the bot now. By the way, now everybody can see why I use snippets. Could you see how I massively screwed up Twitchers? I got every letter that's in the <laughs> word and completely mixed up the order of them. <laughs> how weird. Uh, All right. Jimmy Barrow, for the Git Ignore node modules change, you could just click the refresh button on the source control bar instead of reloading the whole thing. Yeah, I could, uh, but I have a oh. thing mapped for that. But yes, you are absolutely right. That'd probably be easier. I was just frustrated that it didn't just work automatically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a function. We know how to in interact with it. I, we do not yet know why greeting is the one that it's matching, though. Right, so let's go take out. Uh, take out. Let's check out the Lewis.ai site. Okay, I'm going to put back Supio, by the way. And now we're going to go to Lewis. So Lewis is the one we're talking to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back up here. Uh, I thought I had Lewis open. No, I didn't. So we'll go back to Lewis AI. That's Lewis SI. Yep. Lewis AI. <laughs> Lewis C. I don't even know what that was. Broadband. Spamming me, man. <laughs> All right. So, Lewis stands for language understanding something or other. What did I say before? Is super? Yes. Language understanding is super. So, this is a test <laughs> one I did before. This is the one we created today. I know this because I didn't name it like that. It added some mm -hmm. weird four-character extension. Let's click on it. Really? Let's Okay. <laughs> Slight delay here. <laughs> yeah, so that the Azure when you go through the Azure portal to build that bot function, it will behind the scenes create and and you say that you want to use the template of the language understanding like that, it goes behind the scenes and creates it for you. Yes. Based on that name. So we'll Lewis has characters. things called intents and entities. Yes. And these are ones that got created automatically by that template we created, mm -hmm. right? Because we didn't yep. do this. Like we didn't intentionally do it. It just happened for us. Right. So if I tell me where I get wrong here, but I've got intents. That's like, what am I intending to do? And then there's things called utterances associated with them. This is the number of those. An utterance is something I say or type. 
and then we map those to the intents, right? Yes. Let's click on greeting. All right, let's check it out. All right, so the greeting is up, and I see a bunch of utterances like, hello, hi, how are you, good morning, good afternoon, how are you today, how are you doing, hello, bot, good night. Uh, why is good night part of the hello greeting? Okay, but anyway. And there's multiple pages of those. And they're all mapped to something called a labeled intent called greeting. Yes. So what that is based on when you train it, if you see that button in the top right hand corner got a little green light next to it almost green means it's uh, already trained yeah yeah so if you were to add new utterances like different ways of doing a greeting might come in like well met you would then or... what's that so i'm going to add one called well met sure and, and then once once lewis has been trained on that it it shows you the uh I don't know the exact terms for this stuff. I'm not like a That's okay. scientist in this stuff, but it's like that the uh, the rating how well it matches the greeting category of and your right intent. And right now it's at point fourteen, that... which seems a lot lower than the others, which are point nine eight and point nine nine. So I should train it, right? Right. Yes. Okay, I'm going to train it. Well met. Labeled intent is greeting. Right, because when you first add it, it's based on like Lewis has memorized and understood the other greetings and it notices that well met is kind of like not very related to those. So that's why right. it gives it a lower rating. So it's it actually, it to say like, yeah, now it's 81% and the other ones are all lower. They used to be 98, 99 because they're all very similar. So now they all right. went down a little, but well met's up there. Okay. Yep. We can test so that's it. That's what right? that's doing. What's that? So I can test it right here with the test button and say, uh, first of all, I can say well met, which should find the same thing you would hope. If I click on it, I can see the utterance is well met and it matched to greeting. So greeting is like the category, it's the, it's the intention. Mm -hmm. I could say something else like, uh, yo dog, what's <laughs> happening? Yeah. And that got mapped to none because it couldn't figure out <laughs> what the heck I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, exactly. <laughs> and we can get rid of the test, go over here. There's other intents too. So there's greeting, cancel, and help. We're gonna use cancel later to cancel things. Greeting is just our normal, you know, uh, hello world. Yep. Help is like if we want to create like some kind of help thing, help responses. Mm -hmm. And then none is is that like a canonical thing you always have, a nun? I don't know, actually. <laughs> so, uh, so Darren81 says, is Lewis just learning from the developer or the end user? Um, very good question, Lewis, or Darren. <laughs> <laughs> John is turning into Lewis. <laughs> yes, I am. Or Darren is turning into Lewis. So from what I understand from this, Will it be learning as well? Yeah, it's learning, but it seems to be learning when we press the train button. So as we type in more utterances, we can train it to match those. But I think what he's really asking is if the user types in a bunch of utterances, like if somebody typed in, hey, is this where I get my frozen chickens? That's totally not in here. Is Lewis automatically learning that or do we have to then gather that information and then go train it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think... Uh, at least my very, you know, little bit of understanding with machine learning, the more data we provide to it, the better it's going to be able to pick up on things naturally, however a user might throw at it uh, over time. So I think because of the fact that there's such a low amount of data set in there right now, if, if you were, like, if you notice when we added a new intent, it gave it a rating right off the tap, the top, or right off the bat, rather. Um, Yep, and Undertow is kind of guessed that it was a greeting. Right? And Undertow is pointing out the same thing. It's as a developer assigns these and trains it, but yes, as a user, you can see what's happened. So, and I think that's on this page, review endpoint utterances. You can see like the ones I typed before. So, if they don't match something, you could use that and then go ahead and you could add it to an aligned intent. Like maybe hello, Twitter should be mapped to greeting. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yes, you can do it, but I don't think it's automatic. It doesn't just happen. You still have to go back and look at those. And uh, thank you, Undertow3. 
Okay, so I understand now where Lewis is. I understand in our app, this is just a test cycle. So instead of actually using Twilio here, we're going to use this for now. This is hitting mm -hmm. our function, which is talking to, we we'll type into here, it hits our function, which then talks to Lewis. Lewis responds back with if did it match or not. And then the function is then returning that response to us in this case, right? Yes. All right. So what's next? So next, what we're going to want to do, we can do one or the other. You can decide. We can stay in Lewis and train it for handling lights, like the lights in your office. Yep. Sounds or like we can go and set up the LIFX stuff. Why don't we... I say we stay in Lewis. Yeah, let's stay in Lewis. We're already here. And just to make life easy, like I see you've got greeting there. Mm -hmm. I also see you've got something called lights. I'm assuming I'm going to have to create a intent called lights. Yes. And anything else I got to look at? Doesn't look it's at case it. sensitive too, from what I can tell. Okay. So we're going to go I'm back sure to Lewis, that. create new intent, lights, done. Mm -hmm. Adding intent. All right. Now type five now, examples the user might say, Brian. Exactly. What are some of the things you might, what are some of the commands you want to send to it um, to handle the lights in your, your office there? So what I say at home, because I have Alexa hooked up to it right now, and I can't say it loudly, is I say that name I just said, <laughs> and then I say, turn on dad's office, because that's where I am. Okay. So turn on dad's office, like that. There it is down here. It's loading the utterance. Anything else? Well, are there any other ways you would possibly say it? Like turn on office lights. Um, yeah. Light me up. How about that? <laughs> that sounds good too. <laughs> Anybody else have any ideas which you want to type in here? What do you want to do to make my lights turn on people in the chat? You let you enter them and I'll type them on or off. Go to the dark side. So these are all on. Do I also type off ones in here? Uh, what, we, what we can do, I'm trying to think back what I did. I, I started out where I was typing on and off, but based on what I've learned since then, we can, the next part here is figuring out what are entities in here. Uh, so there's an entity that we can say the light state, which would be on or off. Uh, and then there's the entity, which is what light, right? <clears throat> so in this case, we're working with two entities that we need to create. Okay. So I'm entering in here from not man. He says computer illuminate and Saju says Shazam. So I entered those. <laughs> I like those are great. <laughs> awesome. They're much better than what I write. So now we're going to okay. do entities. Yep. I don't know how we're going to handle those other uh, ones, but that's, that's we'll, fi cool. we'll figure it out. <laughs> So I noticed yeah. a couple things I can do. I can click on like the word office. Is office the, en the entity? Is lights the entity? What's going to be the entity? Uh, so I would say it, it really depends on how you want to break things out. Being that we're just working with one group of lights, I would say anytime it's like the office is the entity, okay. um, we'll let that be the case for the, the light to turn on or off. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what we can do is modify the code such that um, if that isn't supplied in the text, we automatically assume it's just those lights for now, right? Since we're just working with one, you know, like entity of lights in general. Okay. Does so that make sense? I'm on the entity page and we're going to create two entities from what I heard you say. One's going to be like power for on and off. Yep. Okay. And I'm making that a list because we want it to be on or off, right? Yes. And then you just supply it with on or off. Okay. And the there. There's a slight delay here, just so you know. So I hit done and it waits for a minute. Okay, that's fine. Now I type my new value, I type on. Do I hit enter? Mm -hmm. Yes. Adding sub list. And it takes a moment. Usually it takes a couple seconds for it to appear down here for me. There it goes. Okay. okay. And now type off. Off, oh, yep. I notice after a while too, like the recommended list will actually show up if it can pick up on like what you're trying to do. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, so I have the power. light bulbs you have. Speaking of which, the light bulbs that you have, do they support color? Yes. So maybe we should add that as well. 
Let's do power first, but yes. Okay. You're no fun. <laughs> well, I need more entities, right? So besides power, I need, doesn't an entity need to be the device itself? Yeah. What do I call this one? Device, so, lights, what? Uh, you can call it, I went with just light. Like light. It's a light. Yeah. L-I-G-H-T. Yep. Sim simple and I made it simple system. since I was just working with one light or if you're just working with like a group of lights, if you named them as a group in your house, uh, that's the way we can do it as well. So this is a question I have for you. And I know, I don't know if you know the answer because we talked about this offline a little. Should I, I have lights in my family room, my office, my kitchen. Should I create one entity for light or do you think I should create an entity for dad's lights, family lights? Why don't you create one for I light? think to... So to make it more versatile, we can go that route of letting it recognize and um, pass that information yeah. in. But just to keep it simple to get things working, we, okay. we know that we're always going to map to your dad's office, right? For so now, we can yeah, just yeah. say we could just say light, you know? Okay, so I made that simple, which is freeform text. Mm -hmm. And now I got to type in utterances for light. So these are words that probably mean lights, right? Yep. How about the word light? Light. Dad's office. So, fortunately, this is not like I typed it. How do I actually make them go? Like, add it. Oh, I'm catching up on what you're seeing. Sure. Uh, so, since it's a simple type, we're not adding a list of them anymore. So, what we need to oh, do okay. is go back over to uh, intents and That's then right. for the utterance that. What's that? So that's right. Yeah. You lost me now. Where'd you go? So fo just so folks watching know, Brian's actually listening to me in a slight delay, which is why the conversation is a little weird sometimes. So I'm back on the lights intense page. Yes. And it says there's no entities in use. So now I'm going to have to map my entities to the intense, right? Right. right. So the easy ones are like on the turn on dad's office lights. Yep. You could say on is power. That's easy. On should be power. Uh, and then create as normalized value or set as synonym. Normalized uh, value, right? Normalized, yeah. All right. And now, then we should be able to say like, Shouldn't have picked up uh, on up top here too. In the office lights. I think it needs to be trained. It'd be, if you train it now at okay. this point, it, okay. I think it might pick up. So now, if I train it, it should find all the instances of an app, uh, on. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Th lights. So this delay. So I'm able to hear you immediately, but the delay is seeing what's on your screen. Okay. So should I, like, I can click lights and map that to light, but should I click that individually or should I click dad's office lights and collectively and map it to light? That's a good question. I don't know if there's a way you can select multiple of those to be the okay. whole entity. Yeah. So a I wrapping find, composite? Yeah, if you just start clicking on everything that's there like this, and I know there's a slight delay, like I clicked on all the words separately. Okay. Now the, word, the phrase dad's right. office lights, I can map that to light if I want. Yeah. Should I do that? Yes, let's do that. All right, cool. I'll do the same thing with, actually, let's try to train it again, just to kind of see what happens. Will it pick up office lights or my office? Training the app. It didn't pick those up yet. Okay. But let me, let me just do, I could do office separately. Let's do that. And let's do lights separately. And I'll train it again. I want to see if the illuminate my office automatically gets mapped. Yeah. Or this is up. really interesting to see because I haven't tried like these other potential ways to say things. It's always been like, turn on the office, turn off the office. It Very did not boring. pick up light me up, by the way. So I mapped lights to light, but it didn't pick up the singular yeah. version. Interesting. Light me up. Well, because that's kind of a verb, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's really a bad one. I don't even want to do it. So we'll map light. Light me up. I'm deleting this one. No one's going to say that to enter my <laughs> office. Delete the utterance. <laughs> illuminate my office. So illuminate would be power. Mm -hmm. My office is one word for light. And Shazam, maybe I should edit this one. What do you think? 
We'll say Shazam. Well, I think you, if you say Shazam, the assumption is turn the office on. Well, how would I so do that? Just, just uh, I would say Shazam, Oops. map that to the power entity maybe. It might confuse the, bot, uh, the Lewis though. Well, let's stick with the ones we got for right now. We'll add Shazam back in a sec. Okay. If we click on it, we, we can, if we hover, you can see Illuminate is still there. Like the utterance is still there. It's just the blue squares are what um, it's focusing on. Right. Okay. All right. So we've just trained this. Now we could actually test it and I could type something. Yes. In let's like do that. that. Illuminate me. Let me just type that in. And it's, it thinks lights. That's because illuminate was matched to power and light was matched to office. But how does it know which value in power to use? Because illuminate would really mean power on, right? Yeah. And that's where I think it gets kind of uh, hairy, at least at, at least my understanding of everything. Because So shouldn't we do... Start getting into other... Words so shouldn't power. power be set as a cinnamon to on? Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's try that. We're learning sure. here. Let's see how that goes. All right, let's test it again. Illuminate me. And this time, it shows Illuminate me as lights edit. And it's mapped. I don't know if it mapped to on or not. I'll do that. On is on. I don't think we told it that. <laughs> Power. On is on. Lights. Train. Once it's done, we'll go ahead and start okay. over here. Illuminate my lights. And it matched to power, illuminate, and light is my lights. Okay. Okay. But it doesn't say power on. Like, it doesn't know the value inside of power, right? Right. I think we. that's something that we need to dig more into how we can uh, accomplish that. Because I'm not sure. Okay. So what did you do with yours? I did, yours. for mine, I did just turn on the light. Yeah, but what did you map? Turn on okay. the light? What's that? So when you have turn on the lights, what did you map onto? Uh, I, instead of calling it power, I called it state. Okay. Um, and then light is just my light. But you mapped and it to state? Much. You didn't map it to state on? Yes, it's state on. Okay. So when you do your test utterance, does it show state illuminate or state... Or does it show state on? Let me do a test. I'm wondering too. And the oh, light. Going back and into this. I could change back as to state. Did you call it state or set state? I called it state. Okay. I'm going to try changing power to state and see what happens if I screw it all up. Look at all those recommend options. Yeah. Uh, text Vetrick says you may want a light power so someone can say dad's off is on or something like that. So like switch the, the order. Of you may want light power so someone can say that. Let me go back to... It did not update power. I'm going to refresh just to make sure I know what it's looking at. Sublets okay. cannot contain entries of duplicate canonical forms. That's an amazing error message that means nothing to me. <laughs> Test Vectrix, you may want light power. Uh, which screen are we talking about on Text Vectrix? I think he's talking about in the um, intense. Okay. So instead of saying like, turn on dad's office, you might just go in and be like, dad's office on. Okay. If you spoke like I can that. try that one, dad's <laughs> office on. Let's take out all, all real English. That'd be good. So it picked up on, well, now it's called state. See, it did, it did remap power to state. That's okay. Dad's hmm. office would be the light, right? Yes. 
I train it again. Is that what you want to text vectors? We got it then. Okay, we have trained. We can test. All right. We can test. We're good to go then. So now well, let's go over to the LIFX ah, APIs. That's what Let me for. get you. So I think something was wrong before. Sorry, Brian. Notice in the entities now it says state is on. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Cool. So what do you want to do now? We need to go over to LIFX and you need to sign up as the developer. Okay. So folks know uh, LFX are home automation lights. I've got several in my office, four of them. Um, I can actually control them from my phone just to kind of show you real quick. I'll bring up the app. And let's see. You want to update your lights? No, I don't want to do an update. It's like rebooting the demo. So this is the <laughs> app for LifeX. And then I can go down to my office. I can turn off the lights so you'll see it get dark in here. Turn back on, and I can also go in there, and as Brian mentioned earlier, I can change the colors, which is kind of cool. So I can make it get brighter, can make it get darker. Lots of fun. All right, okay, so, so in, what do I do? In the Twitch chat, I went and put up the uh, link you need to go to. You might want to do this uh, off screen so that you okay. don't see the key that you're going to generate. Let me do this. I'll go off screen. <coughs> if there's any chat messages, I'm covering mine up so you can answer them. Yeah, I got you covered. I have not signed up yet. This is like a developer sign-in, right? Yep. Let's do that. And then once you get through that, you're going to want to generate a new token. Okay. And you give it like an app name and all that fun stuff. Experience the world's Wi-Fi. Already set up, signed your email. No. Where's the like like sign up thing? I don't see a sign up button. I don't know if I can I can help really there. Uh, just go to the button that you told me to go to. Cloud I'm signed into mine right now. Hold on, let me go to incognito. Oh, at the top, at the in the text where it says "new to LIFX," experience the world's favorite Wi-Fi smart light. Sign up with the oh, LIFX app. I guess you use your normal uh, login. I tried that; it did not work. Isn't that fun? Hmm. So this is back on LifeX's site. Go back to LifeX code. I put my email in. My password did not work. Yeah, I've got my password here in my 1Password tool, which is awesome. And I hit forgot my password just in case it doesn't like it. It's not sending me nothing. So I'm stumped. I don't know how to log in if I can't log in. Let me, uh, let me see what's going on here. I'm going through a couple different websites here. see so I'll go back on screen just so folks can see yeah it's not what I wanted cloud I'm looking for a developer account cloudlifex.com type your email in you can all see my email I don't mind and then password I use this tool up here and just enter it and it tries to sign in and it says it's incorrect Try doing I forgot my password. I did, and it said to email to me, and I'm looking at my email. There is nothing there. So I see I have, looking at my password manager, I have one for normal LIFX, and then I have a developer one. So that's why it's confusing me. Why Maybe I'm on the wrong page. Now? Yes. Trying to go back. Should just, is it cloudlifex.com? Yeah. Terms, policy, help. Sign in, new to LifeX. How? So, you know, developer, LifeX. If you need to hire oh, developers, maybe... API.developer, LifeX? 
Yeah, and then that brings you to community.lifx and maybe sign up there. Authentication. Sign up with your readme.io account. Let me bring it back to you. What the heck is this all about? If you go to community.lifx.com, this is a bit confusing, actually. They it's need very to... confusing. Do I have to, do I have to um, sign up here? I would say sign up there. Okay, so... Let me see if I log so in. Log in. Sign up. Full name. I can't even spell my own name, people. <coughs> now I'm going to change that password. And I'm going to go generate one. No, we don't show people what it is. Let's fill it in. Sign up. LifeX Dev. All right, I'm logged in. Now what? Uh, now you want to go to that link I originally sent in um, the chat, which is the okay. cloud.lifx one, and see if now it lets you go generate a new token. Okay. I'm in community.lifex.com. Is that what you want me to do? Cloud.lifex.com slash cloud. setting. Let's try to go right to setting or settings. Settings, plural. It wants me to log in again. Let's go back up. I'll use the LifeX developer one I just created. And that one says it's incorrect. Oh, my God. Oh, I just got to verify email. Let me go click on that. Oh, maybe that's it. All right. I just did that. Let's try this again. LifeX developer. Nope. LifeX doesn't want me in, dude. What is the deal? I have no idea. So... You log in over here. The correct username. Why is nobody... Okay, I'll create another account. What the heck? Do you have to create a username? No. Maybe it really does have to be done through the app? Why would that be? Well, I created one through the how app before. How did I do before. What's that? I created one through the app before because that's why I turned my lights on. Yeah. Create new account. This is communitylifex.com. You're almost done. We sent an activation email. Let's try this. Welcome to Lifex. Click on this link to activate you. This is off screen. Click here to activate okay. your account. Continue to the Lifex developer zone. All right. So I'm dragging this over. Your first notification selected to begin. All right. I'm in, I think. Oh, let's see. Drag it over. No. no. That was like the community site for LifeX, not the developer. <laughs> All right, let's do this one more time. Go to go to the cloud.lifx.com, no setting. Yep. And just sign in with your normal LIFX account. Which of the three that I have now? <laughs> uh, look on your phone and see which one you're signed in on there then. This is the one. Because that's I'm what I'm noticing. I'm selecting it now. Okay. And it just, it's the same thing I've been doing where it keeps kicking me out. Let's see. Let's do it, I'm going to go into my phone. Like, I can't see what that password is in my phone anyway. Yeah, but the, it'll tell you at least the email if it's the right one, I guess. It'll what, sorry? Because I noticed that for me, it's the same email there as it is that I was logging into the cloud here. I don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm looking at the so if in app. the in the LIFX app, yeah, you go to the little gear icon for settings and scroll to the bottom. You could see what email you use. Yeah, I use the same email for everything. That's it. Yeah. And okay. I'm in, but it's not letting me in. I've also tried resetting the password. And then I think right now until we can figure out what the heck is going on with LIFX. Yeah, I don't know. I don't recall having to do anything. Yeah. Use personal act. Yeah. I guess I could give you the, I could give you mine. Here's an idea. I can give you mine and you can control my office from, 
your your app if you want. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just uh, you know post my token in the Twitch chat. That sounds fantastic. Your audio just changed. Yeah, my headphones died. Oh. This is so weird. Like it will not let me log in. So if you go to this link, can I still control my okay. lights on my phone? Uh, that's a good question, Darren. Let me go look. Anyone with LifeX in the line? Well, that would be awesome if they were. We should invite can I next still time. control my lights on my phone? Uh, that's a good question, Darren. Let me go look. All right. So I just turned off my lights. So yes, my app still works and my it's all working. Yeah. So, so if you go, if you go to that link I sent, uh -huh. in the top paragraph it says, "All requests require an OAuth two access token. You can generate an access token in your account setting." Which, that's why I keep thinking, go to cloud.lifx/setting, and if you're logged in under your normal account, it gives you a big purple button that says "Generate new token." I believe you. For some reason. Uh. Sign up with the LifeX app. Is there like a developer link inside the LifeX app? That's what I was wondering. Home kit, update firmware. That's like the last thing I want to do right now. Learn more. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't want to learn more. Settings. Welcome, update, support. Get more lights. I don't want to buy any more lights. I got plenty. On sale accessories. Home kit. I can turn all my lights off. My wife would love that. No, I'm not seeing where that would be at this point. Has anybody else tried this? Like if other folks in the chat, could you try to log into LifeX Cloud here and see if you can sign up? I'll put the link in the chat. Um, I can also just open a new yeah. browser. Sometimes like a new browser makes life happy. So we'll try. And I'll type in, I'll go up here and I'll grab my password. I'll come back to Safari, which I never use. Not now. Yeah, it does not like me. Let's try to reset my password from here. Email, send. I'm checking my email and nothing Yeah, nothing's coming in. Hmm. You'd think that it would like reset my email, my password. Right. I'm gonna check my spam. I'm trying to find through their documentation like where you go to sign up for a. Hey, oh, guess what's in my spam? Oh no. Yep. Set your password. Blah blah blah. Click this link. Link expired. Oh come on, really? Let me refresh the spam folder. Probably because I keep asking for it. John Papa. I'm going to go back to spam and tell it that's not spam. That's a good idea. <laughs> so it should be back in my inbox, which it is. I'm clicking the link. And the link says, set your password. Okay. We're getting somewhere, Mr. Clark. That's good to hear. Uh, I'm going to go get the same password I had before. <laughs> this has to be second guessing their documentation because I was like, oh, it's great. It you can return to, to the LifeX HTTP. app if you have it installed. Open the LifeX app. I don't even know what that means. Okay. I'm going to log back in. Now I should be able to go log in, right? Right. Hey, I logged in now. That was stupid. Get out of here. Sorry. What a horrible, horrible experience. Oh my gosh. LifeX people, right. join our, twi our Twitch chat next time so you can help us. Holy cow. All right, so uh, where your name is, if you click that, mm -hmm. the drop down, yep. you should see setting. OK. <clears throat> hey, we fixed it. Personal access tokens are private. So is it going to show it to me if I press this button? Like that? Don't do that yet. 
Give it a name. Wait, you clicked it on screen? Are we seeing yes. the value of it or no? No, it's blank. I have to give it a label. Okay, go go off screen. <laughs> give it a name, any name you want, but okay. off screen. And this is the key that I'm going to use to talk to LifeX, right? Yes. All right. You're going to put that in that .env file we created way earlier. Okay, I gave it a name, and now I've got a token that I've got to copy somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put it into my little personal clipboard. All right, what do I do with these values? Go back to the project? Yes. In right that there. .env file we created, we mm -hmm. want to uh, paste the value of that under the LIFX API. OK, and I'm going to do this off screen. Yes. Because that's my house. <laughs> right. <laughs> Talking about your house now. All right. Although I did announce it to everybody that they can control your house from this. Well, too bad. All right, it's back. It's forward. Okay. So the function's still running, right? It should be. Do you have uh, that terminal still open up? Yep, it's right here. Yeah. I can yep. clear it out. So now we'll, what we want to do, I think, just to be safe, I don't think we have to do this, but um, if just in case restart it well the function's got the code commented out too so we probably want to undo that right that's a good point so forgot we did that we now have lifex api key which just looking at the env example that's where i didn't add it here by the way I should go add it right lifex api key so we need that too right yeah i checked in an example it's lowercase api Yeah, it messes with you. So yeah, I have the easy example, but I did not do a pull yet. Did you call yours the same file name? Uh, no, I did it. Okay. Uh, env hyphen sample. I can't get yours anymore anyway because I disconnected, but that's all right. Right. Okay, so that's that, and the functions over here. So now, now is the other thing we want to do is um. Depending on how you, this, this is specific to LIFX now we're getting into. Mm -hmm. So I assume you have multiple lights in your office that are LIFX, right? Yes. I have four. And then you group them under some name. Yeah, I'll get the exact name. I think it's called Dad's Office, but let me get the exact name. Okay. Because then what, what we're going to do is, since it's a REST API, we're going to pass in the, uh, like, tell it that we're going to identify the lights by a group. Okay. So you say group and then... Um, colon and then the name of it, so like dad's office or something. Okay. Right. Where do I I'm, put I'm that? sending that in the chat so people can see. So that we want to put on, let me double check what line exactly it is. If I can see. Uh, on line 91. That's where we it use says, the API. Yeah. So I have a function on line 79 that's called control lights that takes in a session. Gotcha. Uh, location, light state, and color. And then on line 91 is where we're actually setting the state of the, the lights. Okay, so the label colon label. bottom lamp, this is where I would do dad's office. Right, that's where we would do dad's office. Now, is it okay that there's a space in it? Because that's how I labeled it locally. Yes. Yeah, right. you see how I have bottom lamp has a space? It's fine. Okay. Uh, so, no, 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 hold on. Left hand side would be group. Yep. I guess it's catching up. The, um... What's on the right-hand side? The right-hand side is where you put dad's office. But dad's office is the group. No, no, no. So, do you see in the chat how I put it in there? I put in like group and then colon dad's office. Oh, I didn't look in the chat. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So basically what that's doing is it's saying, I want to identify a bulb or a set of bulbs by this property. Yep. Right, so it could be a yep. label, it could be an ID, or it could be a group, a bunch of things. So we're saying group, and then the name of that group is Dad's Office. Okay. Is there an apostrophe in there, or is that exactly No, it? there's no apostrophe. Okay, that should be good. So now what's, hold on, I got a cough again. I don't want to cough on, uh, in everybody's ear here. You have a call? Yeah, we'll let you take that, go ahead. No, <laughs> no, I, a cough. <laughs> I didn't want to cough directly into the microphone and, I'm and blow out anybody's ear. 
<laughs> cool. All right. So what this is doing, if we step through the code really quick, I'm kind of it's very it's kind of specific to mine, so we may have to manipulate this code a little bit more based on what uh, we put into the Lewis side of thing. But um, if we match lights, it's going to say yep. okay one sec. Mm -hmm. It's then doing something with location and color. We didn't do color, right? So comment that out. All the color stuff. Yeah. And we probably want to comment out the light date too. Uh, on, we want line 50 still? Yeah. Okay. And where is light state defined? Up there? I'll leave it alone. Well, no, because it won't work. Okay. So we'll comment that out. Hmm. So, so we're send that in. So basically, we're saying if we get a location, which is we're always going to have something. Really, uh, and a light state, which would be on or off. We do want light. So we pass actually. that into the control lights function. Yeah, so we do want light state because that's what's getting the state up here. Mm -hmm. What we didn't want was the color, so we're passing in color and color entity. You can uh, just get rid of that. Yeah. So for now, let's just do this. Comment it out. There we go. And then control lights. If I click on it. I'm not getting color. So if color won't be there, that's fine. So it's going to come down, set the power to the light state. What's that going to be? Uh, on or off. Okay. Right. And then set the state Hopefully for the light. Stuff. Yep, and that's pretty much it. So set state says on or off the brightness and how long it will take to transition to that state. All right, let's so walk through it real second. quick so people get it here. Sure. Or so I can get it too. So at the top, mm -hmm. we're pulling in. We got our dot end. That's what's reading our environment file stuff. I like that one too. Uh, doing a new life fix using our key. Connecting to the bots. There's the Lewis API. The Lewis recognizer. And it's then going to pull out with the intent. Hey, did you match greeting? Thank you. Help. Cancel. Lights, etc. Um, and the way we know which one we're going to match is like if I typed in here, turn on dad's office, right? That should return mm -hmm. the right thing. I don't want to do that yet because it might actually start working. But right. Lewis, where was Lewis? We'll go back and try it. And if it matches lights, we're grabbing the location from Lewis. Location is going to set... What is location going to be? Find so location. Uh, yeah. So what's location that is basically. Be? What's that? I said, what's that value going to be? It's going to be another JSON uh, object, uh, kind of like the light state example we okay. saw there, where it tells you the entity the type. Um, what that's essentially doing is it's allow us to future proof it in case you wanted to do specific, maybe other groups in the house. Okay. Um, so we're kind of really right now just ignoring that, even though we're getting it. We're, okay. And the light state is going to get the on or off. We're going to turn on dad's right. group no matter what at this point. Right. We That's all we want to work with right now. So we okay. just care about light state. So then we got to control the lights. We have a location. Let's make sure we do. Location is going to come back with something, right? Sure. Well, if it doesn't, it's not going to hit the if. Right. We, the only way, so this is where it's interesting working with the these different services mm -hmm. is we, ha, in terms of debugging it, you debug your code here, but you also need to make sure that like you're testing the like we were doing earlier, the Lewis API based on what you put in, you get what you expect out right through that testing. So depending on how it goes there is what we're going to end up seeing here as well. So I've got to do a context like log if things. I want to log these things, right? Yes. However, it's very weird the way it, it console logs each, like it's, say it's a JSON object, it yeah. does it line by line. Yeah, we'll see how it works. Control the light, light state entity, location, light state. Yep, yep, yep. So it's going to call control lights if it's happy, which is then going to go ahead and set the objects, then call the client. Client is LifeX. 
In fact, I'm going to rename that. That bothers me. Sorry. So I'm going to do rename symbol to, we'll call it LifeX client. Okay. Set the state. The other thing is, I th don't think that you're doing context.log. I think uh, just do console.log here. Is this an Azure function? Yeah. Shouldn't I have to oh, do let's context? See I don't think context gets passed in in this particular code. Okay. Right now, like I'm used to HTTP triggers. So let me go back and find context. I'll do that. Boom, boom. Okay. Yeah. Seems happy. Want to try it? Okay. Let's try it. All right. All right so everybody watch John's camera. We'll see if the lights go off. Should I? Do we map off yet? Well, let's. I guess we can go to the Lewis API and test it there first. Let's test it there first, because that actually won't run it, right? Right. That's just going to give you how it interpreted that. All right, so let's go to Lewis AI. All right, who's excited here? I'm excited. We've just spent two hours trying to turn a light on or off, which I could have gone to the wall <laughs> and done, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing it through code, man. That's the fun part. All right, so we're going to test turn on off oh. dad's office. Fossils is excited. Ooh, What's up, Fossils? Man. It's good to uh -huh. see you again, man. Okay, good. So, yeah, I typed in turn off dad's office, and it did lights and state is off. Awesome. Yes, developer solving problems we didn't have. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have the problem where, like, they're just sitting and they just they can't even use their voice? I'm so lazy that I can't even just say the words because my office will do that. Just to prove it to you, I'll show you. Alexa, turn off dad's office. Uh, okay. Oh, no. All right. You triggered, you triggered it in my house, too. Alexa, turn on dad's office. Yeah, or use my okay. app, exactly. So I could use the app, I could use my voice, I could go to the wall. Um, but what fun is that? All right, right. Let me try this now. So I'm typing in. Wait till you can all see it here. I'm going to type in turn off dad's office from the bot emulator. Let me know when you can see that, Mr. Clark. I can see the bot emulator. Right, Fossil also, says Lewis and you, she who <laughs> shall not be named are about to fight. <laughs> I like not man. I'm imagining not man now going, the phone, it's too far. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try this. Turn off dad's office. We can see the function is working. Sorry, I did not understand turn off dad's office. Oh, no. That failed. Which what do the logs say? We hit some code somewhere. We hit on default. All right, so if I go back and why? look at what happened. Dude, why did that not work? Message received. Turn off dad's office from emulator, from the universal bot. Okay. Session in, sending one message. So the function sent the message. The question which is... Which greeting did it, or which uh, intent did it think it was? Yeah, that's the question, yeah. right? So what did it match? It matched... It matched the de on default. On default. How Why do we inspect what it came back with? Uh, in the on default, we can probably grab that information. So um, instead of just session, you see how like um, lights has comma arg. You can do that on default and then lock. Say it louder. What am I typing? Uh, so put that in parentheses, the session. Okay. And then add comma space args. Oh, oh, there's another parameter. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interpreting your language okay <laughs> you're interpreting my sign language yes so it's supposed to map to your these? code console log args yes okay all right try it again let's see uh turn off dad's office oh wait it looks like you got incorrect um yes six tech there i got a what this the Okay. way you're passing in those parameters into the anonymous function. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dummy. Dummy's me, not you. <laughs> there we go. Uh, 
By the way, I always clear up my terminal before I run it so I can see all the logs. Just a tip of my own. Sending a message, turn off dad's office. The console log should send us some, show us something, right? Intent should. was none. Ah. Why, 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 why? Really? Didn't that just work up here? Yeah. Turn well, off dad's now office. I'm stumped. How do we know which Lewis we're talking to? Am I talking to yours or mine? Uh, based on the environment variable. Right. Let me go look. Uh, I don't want this on screen for this, just in case. Right. So Make sure it maps the app setting. These are the ones that we copied earlier. All right, so I can close that, go back. Let's try another one like uh, Illuminate Me or whatever we, what do we type? Illuminate Dad's Office. That also came back. This is interesting though, see how state- Oh, I know what's wrong. I've okay. done, I did this as well. We gotta go back over to Lewis. Yep. Uh, you were going to want to hide the screen, though. I think. We've got to publish it. Yeah, we need it, to publish it. it. Yeah. we got to publish it to production. Uh, you know what? I remember <sighs> this. I did the same thing the other day when I was playing with this. I forgot to publish the darn thing. Okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to hit the publish tab, and I'm going to go off screen first. Yeah, because it shows your keys on there, so make sure yeah. you do that off screen. All right. Publish, and then here it asks you, like, what's your time zone? I'm going to tell it that I am in the eastern time zone. All right. Publish to production slot. Yeah, it shows my key right below that. <laughs> it says it's publishing. I can probably show you this if I hide my key. Hold on. There we go. So this is what's happening. Uh, I don't know if it's done publishing, but... 12 seconds ago, published. Okay. So now we should right. try it? Yes. All right, let's bring up code again. Let's clear off the content and the logs. Go back to the emulator. Turn off dad's office. Enter. Sending two messages. I need to know which light, and if you want it on or off, you can say things like turn on or off the light. So let's see what it logged in terms of the entities. So in this case, it didn't get a location, I think. I think that was the problem, because we don't have a location. So let's let's do this. Let's can I set location yeah, to nothingness? Because we're not using yeah. it. Yep. Okay. Location equals. I'll, I'll give it an object, and in the object, I'm going to give it a property called Brian, and it's going to have a value of Clark. Sure. Sounds. Good. This is madness. <laughs> 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 I'm faking a location because we have no location. Fossil says, Lewis and Alexa about to fight. Yes, little and little Andy 77. Very exciting. Cool. We got an error. Hold on. Oh, Brian Clark. We're so close. We so are close. close. Script host error occurred. Job started. I don't see any errors this time. Okay. Let's go back to the emulator. Turn off dad's office. Damn it. We'll get rid of the damn it. <laughs> I entered it this time. Let's see. It still wants to know the light. I want to know the light. It only gets in there if there's no location and no or no lo light state. So location shouldn't have mattered. Light state should come back. Oh, look at that. So Brian Clark is location. Light state is null. Ah. What, what did you name it? Uh, go up to the, go up to the line where you're you're capturing the light state value, and what did you name that? So find entity called state is what you have. Right. Did you did you put it as state in Lewis Let's or did you change the name of it? We played around with this a little bit, so let me go back and look. Uh, yeah. Go to dashboard build. Which page is it? Build. build. Entities. Uppercase state, uppercase light. That's the entity. Then when you it's case sensitive, you gotta do uppercase state. It's silly. But. Okay. That's what you gotta do. 
because I have. Uh, what am I? In? You must be. Yeah, I have lowercase state, and that's why you see that. Okay, I'm gonna put a little to do in here too. Case sensitive. Make it cry. <laughs> All right, recompile. All right, here we go. Close the logs. Go back to the emulator for the 400th time. Turn off dad's office every day. This is going to work this time. Enter. Goes Watching. Through. Watching. My lights are off. Hold on. We, we don't see it yet. The undefined was turned off is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The undefined. We Dude, see it now. What does the undefined <laughs> is turned off mean? <laughs> Uh, oh, I don't location, know. Location, location. So because location. we don't have a location. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because it's it's looking for location dot uh, entity or something like that. It's actually right? just looking for the word location. Location is a string. It looks like. So if I change this to uh, a string, that's like Dad's amazing office, Wonderland. <laughs> right. <laughs> Notman says office is now named the undefined room. <laughs> How about room, room where it happens, right? <laughs> or what is that in Harry yeah. Potter? Uh, do you watch TV? You don't watch movies. That's right. Um, what do they call it? The uh, room of requirement? There we go. No, I don't know. I don't remember. All right, so I'm going to try this. Let's recompile the function. Go back to the emulator. Turn on dad's office. Okay, one sec. My lights are turning on. It still says the undefined was turned on. Location. Oh, uh, because if you look at uh, look at where control lights gets called inside the greedy, uh, inside the lights match. Oh, it's location at entity. Okay. Yep. So you were right. It was a property. Well, that's easy enough to fix. So in real life. I would have a location that comes out of light somewhere. So inside the light entities that we have, we could have locations like sub sub entities. Right. And then you would have to have some type of mapping in your code that goes with uh, the LIFX lists and groupings and light names that you have. Another or, casing issue. Yeah. Good question. Not man. Keep going, Brian. Or what you could do is the LFX API has uh, an endpoint where you can get a list of everything that's in your house, basically, every LIFX bulb that's in your house. Cool. Uh, and gives you the names, the entities, the labels, and all that fun stuff. So, so I just ran it, and it turned it off, and it printed the right wait. message. Because we had been in here for a while, I want to thank everybody. Uh, I'm going to create a repo, and <laughs> I'm going to create it real quick. I'll push it up after this just so people can get to it. Uh, what'd you call yours? Houseboat? <laughs> yeah, houseboat. I live on a houseboat. And create a new repository, just so folks can find this afterwards. And I'll push the code. I'm going to clean up a few things in there uh, and get rid of some of it, make sure the keys don't get pushed up. But I'll call mine the house bot, like that. This is uh, a better version of what Brian Clark built. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> So. Here, you know, <laughs> run automation with AI, Lewis, uh, serverless, right? And we'll make a public, create the repository. So anybody watching it here, you can go up to this link uh, within the next hour or two. I'll have it up there. You can catch it up there. And if you want to try this yourselves, which I absolutely think you guys should try, click on the link here at the end of this message as well a.k.a. msjp Lewis, Mr. Clark, are you happy? You like what we did? I'm very happy. This is cool. This was real. I mean, you've done this before. I have not built an end-to-end -end one before. I've only built pieces. So I think this is great. Uh, Darren, stuck in an ice storm. It's like 87 Whoa. here where I am, by the way. Sorry to hear that you have an ice storm, but come visit us. Didn't expect to send two hours of Brian and John. Thanks for the struggle. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, this is the kind of That's thing awesome, if you knew what man. you were doing from scratch. Probably takes you 20 minutes, right? Um, yeah. Like logging at a life fix shouldn't have been a seven-minute excursion. 
Uh, thank you all for coming. And if you if you like this, follow Brian. He's awesome. He's got his own Twitch stream. He's very prolific with it. You can find him at Clarkio on Twitch and also underscore Clarkio at Twitter, right? And you can yep, also I'm sending me. links now. Yeah, stick the links in there. Uh, and I do this every Thursday is what I've been trying to do. I'm going to be in Finland next Thursday, though. So I have to figure out if I can twitch from Finland in a hotel or not. I'll be at a Ooh, conference called NG Vikings. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, Fossils, <laughs> he's a PC building master. Yeah, he's very proud of his <laughs> PC building skills. You know what I do? I like go online and I buy one. <laughs> Hey, peace, everybody. Hey. Thanks, and so Alexa, long. turn on Dad's office. Okay. That's so much easier. <laughs> it's so much easier. It's not even funny. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great, great week.